Welcome to the Video Insiders Podcast. This is Carlos Pacheco. Who forgot to press the record button. <laughs> and I'm Tom Martin. Uh, you know what? In almost 40 episodes, that was the first time that we did like a real big goof when it comes to recording. So We'll let you off. We'll let you off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we are two grizzled and uh, troublemaking channel managers, people who have managed YouTube channels, hundreds of thousands between us, billions of views between us. And we like to talk about everything that's happening in and around YouTube, in and around the world of audience development uh, on YouTube. Tom, how have you been? What is new? I've been uh, back in the front lines. I've uh, launched a new YouTube channel. And uh, no, it's not me on camera uh, talking about how to do YouTube stuff. Uh, it's actually a movie channel. Um, so I've actually officially licensed uh, a whole bunch of uh, movies uh, cross genre. So, you know, like action and fantasy, comedy, romance, sci-fi, horror. And it's uh, just over two weeks old. Uh, and today I hit the uh, 1000 subscriber barrier. I need to join the partner program. Woot, woot. Actually hit the, uh, the watch time threshold in about six days. Uh, currently averaging about uh, four or 5,000 watch hours every day. Um, so it's looking good, looking good. Yeah, just a bit different. You know, it's good to be kind of putting my money where my mouth is and dealing with a lot of new stuff, a lot of copyright claims stuff kind of going on at the moment. Uh, I actually had my first video that I published be the victim of a takedown, which I am still rightfully fighting and, and should hopefully be the victor of any day now. So, um, yeah, very interesting, uh, quite a big departure, but, um, kind of a cool experiment and, uh, yeah, it's, it's going better than I'd even hoped for. So yeah, really exciting times. Awesome. I, uh, I do think there is a, a untapped market in the world of, ex you know, people who just license for YouTube, right. As somebody who I have one of my clients that you know, does traditional OTT distribution and YouTube has started to become a little bit more important for them as I've helped them grow their YouTube channel and have them understand the content ID side of things. It's been really interesting to see how that's, um, you know, still an untapped uh, market, mainly because I believe because of stigma that YouTube has, right, within the world of television distribution. It's not considered you know, second window, it's almost considered the last bastion for your content. And I think it would be a great, a great episode for us to talk to about like how, how that's different from a traditional, uh, you know, content creator. Yeah, I think it's, I think you're right. I think it is, you know, more and more important in people's kind of wider distribution strategy. And I'm kind of positioning myself like in a way that I've been able to get the rights for these movies is to kind of position myself as like, the outsourced YouTube team where you don't need to set up your own channel. You don't need the expertise, the resources, because, you know, it, it is very, very resource and knowledge heavy to do it right. You know, it's easy to just actually upload a video, but to actually do it well is, is a different matter altogether. And so, yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely a, a future episode and something that's going to be uh, certainly part of my business and my career, but also I think just, a bigger part of the the industry. Very cool. On my end, things are sort of rocking and rolling. You know, funny enough, that little blurb that I had in, you know, Chris Stokel's article on one zero has brought me at least two clients over the last couple of weeks. People who read it and they're like, hey, we need your help, which is really interesting to see. Like, you know, hardly any effort for me and ended up paying off so if i ever have 50 hours a day i will start making <laughs> more 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 you know interviews or more analysis out there just to get my name out there but it's like it, when you think about it it's kind of interesting how effective that type of pr works you know it's like you just give your a little bit of insights to uh people doing articles that are within your niche you know people start calling you up right and you know right now i'm a one man company so i do everything so time is very little but i can see how that could be really interesting in the long run anyways and then uh, over the last couple of weeks my baby and i call my, my baby because it was the channel that brought me into this ecosystem uh just for last hit 
uh, 10 million subscribers, Ooh. which is uh, really interesting. I was able to get TubeBuddy to, 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 you know, to create that little TubeBuddy card, yeah. <laughs> to, you know, 10 million. And also I'm actually, you know, as of the last few months, I'm back involved with the company and actually just signed a one year contract Ooh. with them. Welcome to the, the Diamond Play Button Club, my friend. Yeah, exactly. There's not many channel managers that can say they've done that for sure. Yeah, speaking of that, I am trying to get my own copy of it, but it is a process. Ooh. It is a process. Uh, just as, you, uh, as some of you might know, you're able to order extra th- trophies You know, when you hit those, those uh, benchmarks. But when it comes to the 10 million one, you sort of need to ask your pa- partner manager if you're allowed to do that, to order it more. So it's a little bit more of a process. Please let us know how much it costs. I bet you, I, I'm, I'm guessing probably at least a grand. Oh, at least. Because it's just at least, at least how, yeah. because, uh, you know, the regular 100K is about $150. I have no idea how much 1 million would cost, which I would assume is at least two times that. And then the, the other one's like just so hefty that you, know, you got to be at least in a five to five and up. Anyways, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's been really interesting to see. And, and the funny part is that, uh, you know, my work with Just for Laughs is no longer much YouTube involved. Yes, I'm looking and I'm sort of like, you know, I'm all, I'm also almost just like looking from the top down looking. So, okay, what's the YouTube team doing? They're fine. They're doing everything good. I point out a couple of things once in a while, but I'm more jumping into the world of traditional distribution and OTT distribution and licensing. So I'm learning what you used to do at the BBC, <laughs> which is funny because I'm sort of like doing like the, the other side, you know, uh, the other side of things. Uh, so it's, it's just interesting world. Uh, it moves so much slower, <laughs> so much slower than everything else than YouTube side of things. And yeah. so much more complicated when it comes to content delivery is just another nightmare. So I won't get too much into that, but it's just really interesting. We'll say that for things. another episode. Really exactly. Exactly. All right. So before we get going, let's thank our sponsor, which is TubeBuddy, the ultimate tool for creators to streamline their daily workflow on YouTube, allowing for more time to make great content. For brands to help reduce busy work and to focus on what matters, growing your YouTube business. For agencies to help manage multiple channels and for networks, which gives partners the tools for success and attractive incentive for recruitment. Tom, we have a special offer for our listeners. We do. We have a world exclusive multi-channel discount that you can only get by visiting videoinsiders.fm forward slash TubeBuddy. Thank you, TubeBuddy. Thank you, TubeBuddy. So, Tom, what are we going to talk about this week? We are going to put on our tinfoil hats (laughs) and talk about... No, it's not. It's not a conspiracy. It's, um, you know, there is some, there's something happening on YouTube algorithmically. I'm not sure how widespread it is. We are getting reports that it's pretty wide, even though I'm not got any firsthand uh, knowledge of it on any of the channels that I'm looking at. And I've got access to maybe 20 channels at this point in time Mm -hmm. and a couple of networks. Uh, Although I must say, I've not looked probably into deeply at, as you have, Carlos. Um, but t- tell us what what is it that you've you've kind of noticed as of you know the last say thirty days. So, you know, we all saw the bump, the COVID bump uh, of views over the last few days, a few few months, and we saw the CPMs go down and all that sort of stuff. And you know, everybody was sort of like taking it with a grain of salt, understanding that you know this is the ecosystem we're dealing with. And but you know, two three months in, we started to see you know, CPMs coming back up and, you know, things seems to be stabilizing. And then a couple of networks that I sort of oversee and I advise on, and they are in a specific, I wouldn't call them a specific vertical, but almost like a broad vertical. So they're almost like not in a vertical. Is that the problem? Yeah. uh, Yes. But I would say they are in a way, I mean, in the terms of like, they're in the entertainment side of things, right? So they're not kind of niched. They're not like a focus, you know? No, it's more like talking about like, what's, you know, the latest hot TV show, the latest, uh, hot movie and the latest, you know, uh, IPs and stuff like that. Right. And about, about two weeks ago, Traffic from home specifically started to drop, like dramatically drop to a point where some of these networks have seen 50% 
drops over the last two months. I started to say like, this cannot be normal. Like this is, you know, uh, yes, we did see the COVID bump. So maybe that 50%, you know, is, is bigger than it should be, but seeing home traffic, you know, as a source completely disintegrate, uh, where, you know, nothing's changed in the upload schedule, everything's going as before. I started poking around a couple of our colleagues doing the same work as I do also saw it. And then I started using TubeBuddy's channel metrics tool to sort of take a look at other channels and how they were doing. And same thing, like literally mid-May, things just started tanking on many, many channels. Obviously, you can't see the source on those channels. And again, these tend to be like channels that are creating like, you know, content based on IPs, you know, entertainment, the entertainment world more than anything else, right? It's not their, it's not YouTuber channels. It's very, it's, it's a little bit more corporate-y. So, you know, asked around, everybody's, you know, said, talk to YouTube. YouTube's, let's just say, when you ask your partner manager, they say like, where do you see this? We're not seeing this type of, <laughs> that's the type of answer you get, yeah. which is, which I find is always sort of like, uh-huh. You know, that's really sure. Sure. Have we, have we done an episode yet on partner managers? Because honestly, Oh man, I think I think, we, want I, think some, I think our channels would yeah, be exactly. cut down. I, I cut would down still like to have that. some relationship with YouTube. I think they find the best not to have a relationship with me, but yeah, essentially, you know, big drops. I decided to post on, on, uh, on Reddit, on the partnered YouTube uh, subreddit, just to see if anybody has seen it. And obviously there's a bunch of comments here and there. And then somebody, uh, a user pointed out, and uh, I'll uh, I'll try to see if I can remember. I'm just roll this up here as as we're talking. The name of the user was Joku Frosty. Pointed out that uh, YouTube's going ahead with their latest ranking factor, and which is like user viewer satisfaction. You know, at first I was like, uh-huh, that makes sense, but it's like seeing that drastic of a drop seems. To, uh, you know, after you know, I I sent you the message, Tom, and you're like. <laughs> Typical Tom, that's complete bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that was my initial reaction, at least. Yeah, and uh, at first I was like, you know what? Tom's probably right. It can't be that drastic of a drop. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, we're still in that situation where these channels that are you know, pretty massive, you're talking about channels with 10, 20 million subscribers, networks with like, you know, seeing millions of user days, a, a significant drop. So we're starting to under think is like, is it time where YouTube's really, you know, bringing in this viewer satisfaction metric that is very sort of like, you know, cloudy as a yeah, as yeah. a as a metric i find right i'm just not convinced and the answers that i did get that i heard that youtube said is that everything is working as intended <laughs> that's yeah. literally <laughs> that was like the most non-answer youtube thing yeah. that i've ever i've ever heard i went through the public youtube creator process to to get to see if they could give me any answers which i knew i wasn't going to get an answer and i got exactly the same answer like literally Exactly. Like they, they must be copy pasting their answers yeah, to well, people, yeah. you know? So yeah, essentially it, to me, I find it's a mystery. We're deep diving into it. We see channels that hit the same drop. I also posted this on the TubeBuddy forums. And, you know, again, when you look at the TubeBuddy metrics on specific channels and, you know, I went to take a look at even, you know, which is funny, even YouTube's creator channel has seen a drop specifically, mm -hmm. specifically as of May 15th. That is amazing to see like a, a drop on air, so many channels within the same week. And that's my tinfoil hat story of the week. <laughs> yes, I, I was initially skeptical, you know, and that may be due to the fact that I'm not operating in that space where anything's really been affected or at least i've not noticed it and uh my first reaction was well maybe it's just the world is going back to work you know mm -hmm. Lock lockdown is easing around the world people are slowly returning to some form of normality so maybe mm -hmm. consumption is generally returning to normal levels but then 
uh, after you kind of initially spoke to me, I went and checked and that wasn't the case for the channels that I've got access to. So um, I did start to think that maybe there is some credence to, to what the, the poster on Reddit would, had said. It really made me think that, yeah, they do try things in the most clumsily way possible, just like the sentence that I just formed in that what they do is they do something to a really extreme level and then they kind of rein it back in slowly. So they kind of like slam the brakes on, then they start the engine and they slowly get faster and faster again. So maybe these channels have been caught up in like a big algorithmic test rather than an algorithmic change maybe declines will stop. Maybe there'll be some incline. You know, I was working with a client kind of towards the start of the year. And once we'd finished about a month later, they came back to me and said, Oh, you know, we've dropped like 80%. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're doing everything right. It makes no sense. Like sometimes YouTube just does this and it happens. Like don't mm-hmm. panic. yet. Don't do anything drastic. Here are some other channels in your space and I can prove that they've had drops that are similar. You know, this is not out of the ordinary and, you know, lo and behold, you know, a month or so later, they're back up to the millions that they were doing every month. And like, there's no rhyme or reason for why that drop happened. Yeah. You know, is it a bug? Is it they're testing something? There's so many fickle reasons why channels do well or not especially in a short amount of time, yeah. you know, over a year, over the course of years, you know, it's like class is permanent form is temporary. And that's how I see YouTube a lot of the time. So people can get really drastic when things drop, but it could just be, you know, a short term thing. But then I did realize that we actually made an episode about satisfaction, but we didn't call it that. It was all about when YouTube announced that they would be trying to measure something called quality watch time. And um, I actually re-listened to that episode and it made me think, you know what, this totally does make sense. And then I was also shown a a video from the Creator Insiders channel, um, which talked about satisfaction. So, um, yeah, we're going to dive a bit deeper into that. Um, Before we did dive into the kind of Creator Insiders video, which is YouTube's own channel, um, which I have dubbed oftentimes the the propaganda channel. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why YouTube hates me. This is why. But yeah, but before we dive into that, let's, let's go back and kind of visit our previous episode where we, we spoke about this when it was first announced. So this was episode 14 back in June of last year. So almost, almost a year to the date. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 10 days shy of, uh, of a year to the date. And this was basically on the back of some comments that I think it was uh, CEO Susan Wojcicki made about they were trying to look into like judging quality more than just the kind of average view duration or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize kind of what we we were talking about, we were kind of wondering how they were going to measure it and that was probably going to be the biggest problem. Um, And we kind of predicted that it would be more official and verified accounts from big media companies that would probably benefit. Uh, We also guessed that it would be more official uploads again from big media companies that would benefit. And we guessed that it would be harder to make money on YouTube generally. And I'm not sure whether it's related or not, but I would definitely say that all all of those three have come to pass in the last year. I think they were already trends that were happening, but I think very much so, I'd say definitely bigger channels are doing better, especially from traditional media companies. Definitely official uploads are outperforming UGC. I've seen that across the board. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's certainly, certainly a lot harder to make money on YouTube. Even if you take away the CPM calculation out of it, I think YouTube are putting more and more hoops in place to people to jump through to actually join the partner program and stay in the partner program. So whether that is closely related to satisfaction or quality watch time, whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure, but I think all of our predictions from that episode have certainly come to pass. What would you say on that, uh, Carlos? Um, Yeah, I mean, the last year has definitely seen an uptick on media companies jumping to this space, and specifically in the last three months, right? And um, one of the points that I, you know, first, when I started to see the drop, and again, I want to be super specific here, like the, the traffic drop is specifically 
browse features home right which is like the home screen home page so it's outside of your subscription control and it's uh, purely algorithmic than anything else right so that to me it's basically the recommendation engine yeah exactly and to me that you know the, the quality thing is valid why i believe it is on purpose is also because when i'm looking at these channels the when i'm looking at the line over the last 90 days is that before mid may the line was sort of like you know not predictable right like you know ups downs spikes mountains valleys and then all of a sudden as of may it's flat so there's something being like sort of pre prevented from going yeah, further, throttled, right? Yeah. Throttled, right? And again, I'm not basing myself off of one channel. This is like two to three channels where I've seen this. The quality thing, definitely. Uh, other things that I was thinking about is the influx of big media companies over the last three months, right? It had been gradual since last year. It's not like a um, bunch of companies were there. And then all of a sudden, you know, obviously nobody, you know, content companies need to, or say publishers need to get their message out there. And when the COVID situation hit, everybody just jumped on platforms. They're publishing way more content. They're doing a lot more live streams, right? Everybody's doing live streams. So you got to expect that that takes a big chunk of bandwidth of everybody's time, right? So these are all little things that could be could be a factor, but also other metrics that I'm looking at. It's like you look at you know Google Trends, YouTube is actually on the up and up. It's spiked over the last couple of well, spiked. YouTube can't really spike. It's pretty much it's pretty big out there. But you know people searching for the YouTube online, the YouTube online is um, you know it's it had a lift over the last couple a couple of weeks. Okay, so. I feel like more into tangent here, but so I'm just going to end with this one is that this morning I was like, okay, well, this cannot be normal. And then one of the things that I went in to look at is Google trends. I started searching stuff like movies, cinema, you know, entertainment space. And guess what happened as of May 15th in Google trends? Went down? Crash, like serious crash. Like nobody's searching for cinema anymore as of May, right? So then I'm like, huh, there's a big one there, right? So slowly putting the pieces together, you know, it's it could be a combination of things. There's channels like Screen Rant that are out there that are based themselves off movies and all that sort of stuff. And they've seen drops and uh, they've seen ups and drops and all that sort of stuff. Is that because there's nothing in theaters at the moment? And so that kind of halo is gone or? Yeah. Well, I mean, again, this is me looking at the ecosystem, right? It's sort of like, okay, well, first two months of COVID lockdown, theaters were sort of like, yeah, let's delay, let's delay, you know, and things will come out, things will come out. And then all of a sudden, like by month three, they're like, oh, crap, <laughs> we're not coming out with anything anymore, right? There's just nothing, you know, there's no way. People are starting to realize just like how devastated the world of entertainment, it, the world of movie entertainment is going to be over the next, you know, six yeah. six months at least, right? They were in denial the first couple of months. And now, you know, I think as of this week, they're announcing that theaters are opening at 25% capacity in mid-June. I'm like, good luck with that. Like, not, I don't know, like, no matter what you open, there might be some pockets out there where people are just going to go. But yeah, uh, it's, it's that, that ecosystem is, is in for a rough, rough patch. No, it's all, it's all relevant because we're, we're trying to kind of piece together a case whether quality watch time is actually taking effect or not. So I think it's all, it's all relevant. But let's, let's yeah. stop our kind of uh, pontificating. I don't think I've ever used that word, but I think I used it correctly. <laughs> um, and let's look at like the word from the horse's mouth. So the Creator Insider channel, uh, which is usually fronted by Tom and I think it's Todd, maybe, from YouTube and the engineering team. They released a video sometime this week in the last seven days. We'll link to it in the show notes called An Insider's Guide to Satisfaction on YouTube. Again, I have a love-hate relationship with YouTube and I have a love-hate relationship with this channel. I don't subscribe to it. I don't watch it regularly, but if someone says like, you need to watch this, I will watch it. 
just out of sheer curiosity. And uh, yeah, I watched this one and uh, it's interesting. And I, I give them credit for, you know, trying to be transparent as possible. I know that's not always possible from a, a corporate point of view. There are certain things that you need to kind of keep to yourself. But yeah, this was really, really interesting. Did you have you watched the video, Carlos? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, to me, you know, the the thing that I, that I came from it for me is that, and, and you know what, we have exactly the same relationship with Creator Insider. It's like a lot of you know, for the most part, it's fluff. Then once in a while, they'll put some nuggets in and that are good. Like this video was a good is a good video, right? And then there's the other video where they talked with Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, you know give some good nuggets, but I'll, you know, I would say yeah. three quarters of it is fluff. They talk about their, tr what they're trying to do to, to, to measure satisfaction without sort of like, again, getting into any details. It's, it's the whole package. It's the same story that we've been talking about since the beginning, right? It's what is your thumbnail, right? Is your title, right? Is your description, right? Are you getting likes? Are you getting shares? Uh, are people watching from the beginning to end? Uh, all that situation. Well, this is what I, this is what I thought was interesting that they said that, well, you can watch to the end, but you still might not have enjoyed what you watched. And I found that interesting because obviously that is true. That mm -hmm. can happen, but then surely your viewing pattern would change as mm -hmm. to, will you watch the next video that you get recommended to that? creator or not mm -hmm. and surely that is a great sign of satisfaction is are you a repeat customer or not without having to rely on things like surveys which is what they kind of mentioned they were starting to increase which i find hilarious that they're you know they're running survey ads like we've all seen right like ads run before the sh before or after the video at the same time they're turning off the feature to run surveys on uh icards it was like okay yeah no, no i love that so yeah so one of the one of the tips that the the engineer had for getting feedback on satisfaction from your audience was um running polls which they will be turned off in about two weeks so i mm -hmm. thought that was a great i thought that was a great tip <laughs> um and pretty much <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and it's the kind of thing that i would i will always use in the future when people say oh yeah but on the creator insider channel they said that tags are not really that important anymore they also told you to use cards which will disappear in two weeks but anyway i'm being snarky i'm being snarky <laughs> which of course uh i never usually am so i'll stop but yeah i mean at the end of the day like i didn't feel like i was convinced about this metric yeah i yeah sorry to interrupt but yeah i again it's just flashbacks because like i even quoted what the guy said was it's a decent signal you know, he used the word decent. He didn't say like, this is an amazing signal. We can learn so much. He was like, this is a decent signal. You know, it w he wasn't kind of driving home kind of, it was like the signal like they did when they announced really about when watch time came in. Yeah. And I think there's, there's so much to play when it comes to satisfaction and polls. I mean, come on. I, it, it's just such a weird thing to measure because I don't know, like, I can't even think of a video that I would feel like, oh, I'm not satisfied about this video. Like, it's sort of like, you know, the thumbnail sells me. I know what it's going to be. The only time when I'm not, when I'm not satisfied, I stop watching the video, right? It's like, I don't watch it until the end because I just don't care. Like, it's just like, I stop watching the video. And you won't fall for the same trick twice from the same creator, right? Exactly. And then at the same time, like, you know, like, yes, I'll, you know, jump into a video. I'll say like, oh, this was an awesome video by ex YouTuber and it's great. And then there's a rec the recommendation video on the sides and I'm like, yeah, I had my fill. You know, I want to watch, you know, I want to watch this other video that's semi related, but on a different subject. Right. And it's like, I was still satisfied about that video, but you know, I think that, uh, to me, the metric that is still the killer metric is watch time is sort of like, Hey, you know, this video that brought you to YouTube, is it driving you to watch more videos on YouTube? Yeah, that's why, you know, you always recommend a relevant video and you try to make sure that your tags uh, allow so that your videos get recommended. But at the same time, it shouldn't hurt. Uh, and I still believe that this is a metric that should be. And again, what I believe is only matters to me. <laughs> that's not like YouTube should really care. But, you know, again, if I jump into this creator studio, creator insider video, and then I end up jumping into like right now, there's a PewDiePie video recommending next to it. Well, 
Creative Studio shouldn't be punished because I, I decided to watch somebody else's video. They still brought me into the channel. They still made me, st- you know, watch their video. Not they didn't make me. They still enticed me to 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 watch their video. So yeah, again, it's sort of wishy washy at this point. Yeah, I, I think he it was really good that he actually was he put a really tough question to the the engineer that was kind of more concentrated on working on the satisfaction, and he said. Um, so if what's he basically just came out and said like difficult question what's more important watch time or satisfaction and i was like yeah this is what i'm talking about at last he's actually asking the questions that people want to know unfortunately the answer was a non-answer it was kind of like well we look at a lot of signals (laughs) and if people watch slightly less but they're happy then we're happy and and then he said, okay, is there one overall score? And he said, no, there's not one overall score. He's like, each video has an individual score for an individual user. And so I, I don't know. I, I, I can't quite see how this will appear inside of YouTube analytics anytime soon, at least. It might be kind of one of those ones like session time where mm-hmm. you know they're tracking it, but you just have to kind of go on blind faith that it's working or not. That's our breakdown. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a like a star rating system that, that Netflix used to have, which I actually thought was really good. Like you finish watching a video, you quickly give it a, a star rating, and then you know people understand whether you liked it or not, and then they can better recommend you stuff in the future because they've also got watch time obviously people like netflix and amazon have got your watch time recorded so they know whether you stayed around or not so yeah i think having like kind of that star rating system could work it doesn't have to take a million years it could be just like a quick tap how many stars you're going to give it out of five i think what would happen is that most people would probably give it like one star and i think they'd just be scared that everything would just look crap Mm mm-hmm which is thinking now, which is probably why Netflix took that off because they probably had too many, they probably had too many license holders that said like, "Why is my sitcom only showing as two stars?" <laughs> you know, so that's probably why they took it off. I only just thought of that. Yep. All those things can be gamed at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think it's smarter when YouTube controls it, which is fine. Speaking of which, please give five star reviews to this podcast on apple podcasts thank you very much um <laughs> yeah at the end of the day that that can always be gamed especially if it's you, you youtube controlled right so i'm um, sorry not youtube sorry creator controlled it's almost like that situation where i think it was like five years ago they were always sort of like oh they're going to eliminate the like and dislike stuff you know button and they've sort of deprecated it and all that sort of stuff but it's almost like it feels like they want to almost like take away the like dislike button and only show it when they want the check-in type of situation, right? So anyways, I feel like we've got a lot of like uh, tinfoil hats in our discussion today. I I think it's an interesting discussion to have, right? Like I don't want us to be a podcast about like, this is what you need to do. Thumbnail, white thumbnail, this, that, right? So it's never been why we want to have this conversation. We want to have these conversations because we want to sort of like ask these questions, these hard questions that we don't necessarily have the answers to. Yeah, and I think, you know, we are here to kind of put our lens on things as people that have been in the industry for ages and ages and ages. But we'd absolutely love to hear your opinion. So please uh, get in touch on social at Video Insiders. You can email us, hello at videoinsiders.fm. Get involved in the in the, the the Reddit thread that Carlos was involved in. You know, we'd love to know what, what you guys are seeing, what you guys think about this. Tag us, let us know. Really interested to, to see what's going on with you. Yeah, be great, great to know. Yeah, I think that's sort of a... Do we want to keep going on this discussion? Yeah, I just want to leave a really important piece of advice. And this comes from the Creator Insiders video. And basically when asked how how do we improve satisfaction um the official answer from youtube was make good content for your audience so if you've learned nothing else 
please learn to make <laughs> great content for your audience. And I say that with zero <laughs> snark as always. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, you sort of need to listen to your audience and, uh, we've, you need to, you need to sort of like broaden your signals, right? Like I've, We've seen way too many times that channels sort of like slow down and start seeing less views over time. It's so gradual that you almost don't see it. Then after, when you start looking at the big picture, you start seeing it's like, holy crap, you know, they're, we're on used to me making a thousand, you know, a hundred thousand views per video. And now I'm made doing only 50,000 views per video. Well, yeah. You're still getting good signals from your audience, but you're not getting a new audiences yeah. and that's that's a signal right and okay what can you do to drive those audiences this is why like i have sort of like a love sort of like meh relationship with mr beast on one end i love how geeky he is and how really really good at sort of like looking at the numbers shaping the content and and, and building his audience but at the same time i, I have a, a sort of like but okay type of attitude because his format is unique, right? He's, he's giving away tens of millions of dollars to people. So obviously it gets a lot of attention, but he didn't, he didn't start that way though. He didn't start that way. He had to use his, he had to use his ingenuity and his You're right. creativity. To You're get right. It. You know, I think I, the first video I ever saw of him was like, he read the dictionary out loud or something like that. And it's, <laughs> You know, the problem right now is that everybody always compares the numbers that are happening right now, right? They don't point to the to the eight years it's taking him to 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 be yeah. here, right? Media companies, content companies, they don't think that way. They think about like, oh, how can I blow it out of the water within you know three months or or a year, right? I'm very honest when I get new clients. I do not bullshit marketing talk. I say it can take upwards of three years for your channel to really hit its stride. And then after that, it's, you know, a good couple years of like great growth and then there's stagnation. And then there's, you know, it's sort of like the cycle of a channel, right? So you have to take all those things into consideration. And, you know, the, when you look at the ones that are, have been there for a long time, the PewDiePie's, the, the Mr. Beast is that they're constantly changing formats. They're, evolving with the platform evolving with the audience and the demand no i think it's a good point because a big a big drop like this can get people to get out of their comfort zone and say yeah you know this has worked for the last seven years but times have changed and we haven't so you know let's get back to the drawing board so yeah i think you know sometimes this can be a positive for Obviously, it doesn't feel like that at the time, but long term, it yeah. can be positive. Awesome. So this was a great conversation. We've been back and forth over the last couple of weeks and sort of figuring out what we're going to talk about. And I, th I liked how this, uh, at first we were sort of like, let's talk about Instagram monetization. That's boring. <laughs> boring. Uh, and then this happened over the last couple of weeks, and was, uh, over the last week. And I was like, oh, this is a good conversation to have. So uh, glad it worked out. Again, big thank you for listening in. Uh, let us know your thoughts, obviously, on Twitter, Video Insiders, and hello at videoinsiders.com. Uh, one day we'll be popular enough to have our own subreddit, but we're not there yet. Big thank you to our sponsor, TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is the ultimate tool for channel managers. I use TubeBuddy every day. I recommend it every single time I get a new client because it makes my job much easier and faster. And it really impresses the client when you tell them that you can bulk update 3000 videos in a day. It has happened to me every single time I introduce TubeBuddy to a client. Their, their eyes light up and realize the possibilities of bulk updating can do. You can get an exclusive Video Insiders discount by visiting videoinsiders.fm forward slash TubeBuddy. Thanks again, TubeBuddy. Thanks, TubeBuddy. And obviously, if you're still listening, please, please share this episode with a colleague, anybody that would like to listen to this. And obviously, if you do like listening to us, give us a positive rating on Apple Podcasts, because I think that's the only place we can give ratings on podcasts. And you can give us a star on Overcast. Oh, okay. Good to I know. I don't know how important that is or not, but just hit it anyway, right? 
Yep. Thanks, guys. Anything else that you want us to discuss, please let us know again at Video Insiders or hello at VideoInsiders.fm because we want to be discussing the topics that are important to you and the YouTube industry. Awesome. Take care. Bye.